Good afternoon, traders and investors. Welcome to this weekly update of uh, Studamas Trades. Today is Friday, March 3rd, approximately 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I just wanted to give you all a quick update on what's going on uh, in crypto and also our U.S. stock markets, specifically with the dollar. Um, treasuries and of course that spills over into stocks and crypto so let us uh, get started without further ado of course this is the projected cup and handle pattern that I drew in the last video it seems to be playing out guys seems to be going just as anticipated uh, we are forming in the process of forming an almost perfect handle here if the price continues to um, follow the current trajectory but we'll talk about that in just a bit uh, we'll get to that last actually what I want to do is start with uh, the dollar as usual it's all about the dollar and uh, if you will remember we did something to take note of we did skirt back above this macro uptrend indicating uh, the dollar is strengthening and of course when the dollar uh, strengthens that has a negative impact on price in our stock markets and also the dollar is strong the US dollar is strong US dollars can buy more therefore it takes less us dollars to buy more of a thing even a virtual thing such as cryptocurrency and that's why it is negatively reflected in stocks uh, and crypto or any commodity impact in fact a strong dollar is also a place where people seek refuge during uncertain or volatile markets so uh, people will sell their asset classes or they will sell whatever thing it is of value um, that is becoming volatile in uncertain markets that also strengthens the dollar and makes um, the market uh, it floods the market with more of that thing that has been sold all right so hopefully that makes sense it's a simple basic explanation now one thing i was hoping for here guys is that we would actually touch this 200 day moving average before it crossed above this downtrend line that has not happened yet and the reason why i was hoping that would happen is because that provides a good area of confluence the market gets its kiss uh, from mama before saying goodbye and it looks like we are trying to form some sort of a uh, inverse cup and handle pattern here now which is hugely bullish for the dollar and that is something we need to keep our eyes on because should we skirt above this downtrend line uh, that's going to propel dollar bulls to move actually back above the 200 day moving average and if we move back above that 200 day moving average um, it's going to bring prices in the markets down a lot over to the VIX I have adjusted this bullish uh, pattern this bullish triangle now I'm not sure how much weight I give to technicals on the fear chart because as we all know fear is irrational by definition and that's all this is it's uh let me take it out of log mode i'm going to try to get the full scope of our uh you know fear is irrational so it's really kind of impossible to predict what irrational behavior is going to do that's by definition the point of <laughs> irrational um, but it has worked out in the past not saying it will in the future but this is a bullish flag here we jumped up this was a bullish flag and we jumped back into our megaphone pattern 
uh, and we hit the top of that megaphone pattern on the VIX and then came down, fortunately broke below that. And now we're in the process of forming another uh, bull flag for fear. What that indicates for the future, I don't know. Again, I don't place a whole lot of weight on technicals on uh, irrationality. Moving on over to the US 500, uh, a surprise to me several weeks ago is that we broke both above the macro downtrend and the macro uptrend at the same time. I was expecting a break above the macro downtrend. However, it just so happened that there was enough momentum. It pushed the bulls, I gotta see what the time is here, above both the downtrend and the uptrend. We stayed up there for a couple weeks and then now have broken back down again. My anticipated trajectory for the S&P 500 for the next few months was sideways until the Fed, you know, really, until the market really knows what the Fed is going to do. Um, the reason for this breakdown and uh, break up of the dollar is the market is starting to price in, some of the market at least, is starting to price in an anticipated half or 0.5 basis point rate hike versus 0.25. All right, versus the quarter. All right, not all the market is doing that, but some of the market is doing that, and it is bringing price in the U.S. stocks down as well as giving the dollar a boost. All right, and that also spills over into our U.S. ten-year and two-year Treasury, which I'm going to cover in just a bit. Uh, anyways, this was my anticipated. Uh, price movement for the S&P. And now that we have broken back down below this macro uptrend, I still think that is even more confirmation. That's the way the market is going to traject over the course of the next couple of months. Okay, so 10 year is continues to grow stronger. Not a good thing for the markets but it is telling us why the dollar is also going stronger. Uh, again, the market is, part of the market is anticipating a possible uh, 50 basis point rate hike. Uh, so we have skirted both above this downtrend uh, line and also a level of resistance here, uh, which is now confirmed with two two candle closes above so that is now this area now is going to act as support this means the u.s 10-year treasury is going to probably stay strong over the next few months at least all right and two-year is the same thing in fact on the two-year we even broke a previous high over here in October, November sometime, all right? So the two year indicates more of a shorter term basis of what the Fed is gonna do. And again, the uh, treasuries are pricing in the possibility of a 50 basis point rate hike. Um, doesn't mean they're going to be right, but the, uh, the, the treasuries are something to be respected. Uh, 25 basis points, I don't know, would have gotten us above this level of resistance here. But because a part of the market is starting to price in the possibility of that 50 basis point rate hike uh, that gave the, uh, the Treasury bulls enough momentum to skirt that resistance. All right. Now, something we need to look at here is the U.S. 10-year over the two-year, the inversion uh, yield here. And I want to show you guys something. I'm going to zoom out here to the monthly, and then we'll put this thing in auto so we can see what we're looking at. I'm going to add Fed funds here as a new price scale. And what we're looking at is how the inversion yield was a forecast of what the Fed was going to do in the past. It always has been. I want to show you something here. Every time the uh, U.S. 10-year over two-year has been inverted, the Fed has looked at that and take a look at this. 
they have either paused or pivoted. This first happened in 1988, 1989. And then we had over here, let's see, this was the dot-com bubble. Uh, Fed paused and then pivoted. And then we had our housing market crisis in this area. Again, remember that pause of 12 months before they actually pivoted. Touched again here. Uh, didn't actually invert, at, but still the Fed did look at that and uh, eased rates. And now for the first time in history, we are way down. We are really inverted. And I'm sure the Fed is paying attention to this because this could break something. This is anomalous. We have never seen this type of inversion before in history. But every time we have been inverted in the past, as I've pointed out, the Fed has eventually paused or pivoted. Is that going to happen again soon? Remains to be seen. There are some anomalies in the market. We're going to take a look at here in just a second. But this is something to put on your radar too, just to help you keep tabs on what the Fed might potentially do. I'm going to erase all my junk here before I move on to the next chart. Next chart we're going to look at is the euro dollar. The euro dollar is kind of this, and I kept the, the Fed rate up there because I want to show you something. Same thing. All right. So we can go all the way back here to 1982. I'll circle that. Every time we touch this ascending trend line, the Fed did pause or pivot. All right. So then over here, we touched it again in 89. Again, same, same story. All right. Telling the same story. Uh, dot com bubble, pause, and then a pivot. 2006, 2009, pause, and then a pivot. Again, we touched this in 2018, 2019, pause, and then pivot. And for the first time, we've broken below this. So again, another anomaly. We are below this ascending trend line. Uh, something to really pay attention to because this is one of the lead indicators telling us what the Fed might do in the future. All right, 12 and a half minutes in. I want to keep this to 20 minutes for my trading view peeps. Let's take a look at uh, unemployment rate because this is definitely significant being that we have only once in history, actually twice in history, been this low on the unemployment rate. Back here in 50s, in the 50s, our unemployment rate was next to nothing. And then over here in 69, 70, we had a very low unemployment rate. And um, now, again, the latest numbers is uh, unemployment rate is continues to decline. What does that mean? Well, the Fed rate is still up here. Let's take a look at that. Um, so every time unemployment rate, I don't know if that's significant. No, not significant. Nothing there for me. And let me get rid of that Fed rate. Okay, anything else I want to look at here? Credit Swiss. Yes. So this is significant as well. Banks lead the economy. And Credit Swiss, it's in this bullish descending flag since basically since 2004. However, we are skirting with the bottom of this um, bullish descending wedge. And I can show you that by zooming into the daily here. And the daily shows us actually below that. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it's something to keep an eye on because we have remained on this bottom line of support for quite some time and the bears are really pushing down on that and look at all this volume here again when these bullish wedges do not play out to the upside the bearish reaction is very severe so if uh, the severity of that plays out to the downside that will definitely drag the markets way down into 
recession slash possible depression. So again, keep keep your eye on these banks. The banks lead the way uh, in terms of uh, the economy here in the U.S. Okay, now over to my Bitcoin chart. And we'll finish up with that. Actually, Bitcoin chart that I want to show you is up here. Let's zoom into the daily here. Wait for everything to load. All right, so again, we've had um, uh, multiple um, cup and handle patterns look like they were going to play out. First one was right here, formed a little handle right there, broke that neckline. Went to the upside, almost hit our target, but did not quite hit the target of this cup and handle. And it looked at that point like we were forming a larger uh, cup and handle pattern. This would have been the handle. And then it looked like we broke that neckline. But again, I think this is all part of an even larger cup, cup and handle pattern. And in the last video, I pointed that out. And it looks like it, you know, everything is forming perfectly. The cup has formed here. And it looks like we are coming down to uh, test these significant levels, which is, on a technical basis, a very good thing to see. I want to see us test at least 21,300. That's this area right here. But preferably, and I know this is not going to be uh, forming a... Uh, a technically perfect handle on this cup and handle pattern I would like us to see I would like to see us test this level this June 2022 ascending trend line hopefully the price stays up enough to bring this 200 day moving average at least in that area uh, to, to to form a nice area of confluence I know the market wants to retest that 200 day moving average um, but we're not going to get there unless we spend some time here kind of dragging that 200-day moving average up. Hopefully, we can drag it up to intersect with this June 22 uh, ascending trend line, providing a good area of confluence and significant support. Now, I get a little bit worried if we come down below 21,300, but because we have this solid support down here along with the 200 day moving average I'm not that worried but should we break that ascending trend line and the 200 day moving average uh, look out below all bets are off this cup and handle pattern is off the the you know off the boards it's not a bet that we should take anymore and uh, so we we have to get rid of it in uh, not rely on this pattern to play out anymore so draw this up on your charts guys and watch this for a longer term uh, trajectory this is showing us the prices uh, you know previously last year i believed we could break out and and break above this um trend line which comes all the way from march uh, 2020 our the start of our pandemic this brown trend line the target here on this uh, projected cup and handle pattern is taking us all the way up there. I don't believe we'll break through that this year anymore. All right. So my target for sometime this year is 36. Possibly we get up to 37, 38,000. Uh, let me just take a look over here. I mean, it is even possible that we go to 39,000 before the year ends. But I don't see us, and what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to take us out of auto so I can see circle this area of confluence. All right, so see this significant trend line intersecting with uh, the March 2020 ascending trend line. Uh, based upon the, um, the time it's taken us to form this uh, cup and handle pattern, it could be around September before we reach that 39,000. I don't see us going any higher than that. All right, with that, my time is up. So that is what I'm looking at, guys. Uh, a couple more weeks down here at the $20,000 level. Uh, give you some time to dollar cost average in if you have not done so already. Uh, but be careful that uh, you know this cup and handle does actually play out. Uh, if the bottom drops out, uh, it could be trouble. All right, so watch this closely. I right, hope hopefully that helps, guys. And if it does, give me a like, uh, comment, or, or let me know uh, in the Trading View comments as well. Peace.